quarantine is over, people are actually going outside. They're walking down the sidewalks to go to restaurants and shops. Let's say I want to take this bad boy, walk down the street to the plaza and start jamming outside of some of the restaurants and shops for tips. Could I do that legally when the quarantine's finally been lifted? Or would I need a license? Believe it or not, in certain areas, the answer is yes, I would need a license to be able to just walk down the street to the sidewalk, start jamming, have my guitar case open, and make a little bit of cash. The ability to make money at performing certain jobs requires certain types of licenses or some form of a license. There's a fancy term that refers to this, occupational licensing. And this is the next part in our unit on economics that we're going to focus on this week. Occupational licensing has actually been in the news quite a bit this week. For example, they announced, the state government did, that any cosmetologist that's caught cutting someone's hair, doing someone's nails, will be threatened with $2,400 in fines, 90 days in jail, and the loss of their license to practice their job, which basically means their careers would be over. Now, who would have thought the state government could threaten to take away someone's job? I mean, after all, aren't cosmetologists hired by, like, private businesses, like private salons and spas and and places like Great Clips. Now, I also know that many of you have been very stressed about how you're gonna get your clinical hours and all of your requirements done to get your certificate and your license for the field you're pursuing at CTEC. After all, that's what makes CTEC unique, the fact that you can leave high school with credentials and licenses and these different certificates that say that you are prepared to do a certain job. But have you ever thought, who's actually in charge of determining all of that? Well, in most cases, it's the state government, which has different boards, which are almost like cabinet positions in the executive branch. Things like different medical boards, the dental board, the cosmetology board. There's different boards that deal with safety in construction and electrical trades. Each of those boards are made up of people that are familiar with that field, and those boards set out the certain requirements and the certain qualifications for people to enter that particular job field. So, for example, those of you in the medical, dental, and cosmetology fields, you have to pass the exam that's set out by the state board for those respective fields. Those of you in auto, construction, electrical trades, technology, you often have to get certifications. Not to mention those of you that are going to go into teaching or criminal justice or firefighting and EMS. You're obviously going to be employed by the state government, so they're going to make sure you have the right qualifications before you get started. So, for example, in order for me to become a teacher, I had to go to a four-year university and get a bachelor's degree. I had to study everything in social studies, and I also had to study education. I had to pass two licensure exams, a content licensure exam over everything social studies related under the sun, and then I also had to pass an exam that basically was a teacher exam. Do you know basic concepts about education? Then I had to go and student teach under a mentor teacher. And then even after I started teaching, I have to renew my license every so often. And actually this year, I'm about to renew my license again. And before I go through all of this, I had to do a project and I'm going to have to pay the state over $300 in a fee before I can renew my teaching license to teach next year. So the question stands, why do we need occupational licensing? Why can't someone just do a job if they're good at it and make money doing it? Well, some people argue it's like getting a driver's license. You wouldn't want people that had never gone to driving school and passed all the necessary requirements to be out driving on the road. You wouldn't want a unlicensed doctor who had no proof of medical education operating on you. You wouldn't want a contractor who's kind of shady doing work on your house. Despite as much as I might want a haircut right now, you also wouldn't want an unlicensed barber that maybe hadn't had training in keeping things sanitary, working on your hair or on your body. So therefore, some people argue licenses make sure the people doing jobs are well-trained and they're credible, they're honest, and they're trustworthy. But some people argue occupational licensing hurts everyone by forcing us to pay more for jobs that require licenses by restricting competition. They liken it to like a fence. Let's say that this is a certain industry. I don't know, maybe a lawn care industry. And the people inside this boxed off fence here are the people that already have jobs and businesses doing lawn care, maybe mulching or mowing grass or something like that. And so these people already have licenses, but there's new people that wanna join the industry. But in order to join the industry, they maybe have to pay a $350 licensure fee. Maybe they have to go through one year of schooling. Maybe they have to take a big, long exam. And it prevents them from being able to just do that job without having to jump through a bunch of hoops and hurdles. 
Now the consumers down here, they're trying to pick which business they're gonna go to. Because there's only three businessmen here, they offer their prices and their services at $100, $120, or $110. Maybe if these two people had been able to enter into the industry, they would try to undercut their competitors and offer even lower prices, which would benefit us, the consumers. Maybe this guy would offer his services for 50 bucks. Maybe this guy would offer his services for 45 bucks. So by blocking out that extra competition, we, the consumers, have less choice. Whenever there's less choice, you get closer to a monopoly or an oligopoly, which is where those already in the industry, they can jack their prices up because there's fewer of them. That means we pay more to get different services done, and these guys make more profit as a result of that, meaning they can get bigger, better salaries by keeping these people out. If these people come in and compete against them, they have to drop their prices in order to compete, otherwise they'll go out of business. But unfortunately for them, that means that they're likely not gonna make as big of a profit or as big of a salary. So sometimes these guys coming into the labor market, ah, they can sometimes drop wages. Those who oppose occupational licensing say that this serves as a barrier to entry. Kind of like if you're driving down a highway and they close a lane, well, it restricts competition and it also restricts job opportunities. They argue that there's actually better alternatives to occupational licensing, such as certifications, which some of you in Autotech, for example, get as part of your program. The difference? It's not run by the state government, and you could still be a mechanic without a certification. Being able to say that you're a certified mechanic with a certain certification signals to consumers that you have education and you know what you're doing and you know what you're talking about. You could still be a mechanic without a certification. It just doesn't sound as good. And that's just one of a few different alternatives to occupational licensing you'll learn about this week. So, is occupational licensing necessary? Does it really keep us safe? Why can't people that know how to do a job just do it and get paid without jumping through a bunch of hoops? Should you, or anyone really, be jumping through all these hoops to get a license, or is it a waste of time? How much more money do we spend on goods and services because of occupational licensing? By the end of the week, I hope you're able to answer all of these questions and you're able to take a firm stance on if you think occupational licensing is good or bad. Does it keep us safe and secure? Or is it costing you and me a lot of extra money at the expense of the rich getting richer? So here's your assignments for the week. You have three assignments you need to get done. The first two, it doesn't really matter which order you go in. There's an Ed Puzzle called The Case Against Occupational Licensing, and there's a Google form called The Case for Occupational Licensing. I definitely recommend you do those two first. The last assignment for this week is a critical thinking question, which has some resources that support occupational licensing and some resources that are against occupational licensing. I encourage you to go through those, watch the videos, read the articles, and then come up with a really good response as to why you think occupational licensing is necessary and is good and should exist, or why maybe you think occupational licensing should be abolished. So to recap that, Ed Puzzle, case against occupational licensing, Google form, case for occupational licensing, and then last assignment to get done by the end of the week, critical thinking question, should occupational licensing be abolished? Should it stay? Make sure you use the videos and the resources to help you out, to give you some evidence to use in that particular response. Lastly, a few housekeeping things. If you guys message me after 3.30, I may not get back to you the same day. I'll try to get back to you the next morning as soon as I can. But at a certain point in the day, I've kind of got to check out from school. So if I don't get back to you in the evening, I'm sorry. I'm probably eating dinner or I'm invading France in Battlefield 1 or playing Madden or shooting zombies on Call of Duty. I just got to decompress a little bit each day. And lastly, this week, you'll see me put up a poll. It's not necessary that you do it, but I do want to ask if you guys would be interested in me throwing out some Zoom sessions or something, and I would not even require us to talk about government. You guys can just hop on, talk to your classmates, you know, see who else hops on and stuff, and just talk. Um, I think there's something to be said about just being able to talk to people you haven't seen in a while. So if that's something you'd be interested in, feel free to uh, to vote in that poll. And if it's something that enough people want to do, then I'll try to set up a Zoom where you guys can jump on and just talk to each other. You can talk to me as well. Ask questions about class if you want, but don't feel like you need to. Love you guys. and miss you guys. Except those of you that stole money from your kid's piggy bank in the spent game last week. You're dead to me. Just kidding. Miss you all. If you need anything, shoot me an email, comment in Google Classroom, and good luck.